Good evening, children. It's Granny Macduff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. Once upon a time, there lived a pretty little fir tree in a vast forest. It grew in a lovely spot where it had plenty of sunlight and fresh air. And it was surrounded by many very tall trees, firs and pines alike. The little fir tree was in a rush to grow up. He wanted to be big, just like those who lived next to him. He didn't care about the sunshine, the fresh air, or the little children who ran about the forest chattering and picking strawberries and raspberries. They would often sit near the fir tree and remark, Oh, isn't this a lovely little fir tree? It surely is the baby of the woods. The little fir did not care for these comments in the slightest. Hmm, huh. how these children bother me. They won't call me a baby once I'm triple their size. Of that, I am certain. The following year, the fir tree shot up a whole joint, and another the year after that, and another after that. You can always tell how old a fir tree is by how many joints it has. Oh, I wish I were a grown-up tree like the others in this forest. Then I could stretch out my branches and see from my top what the world looks like. The birds would make me their nesting place and I could sway with the wind just like the others do. Oh, how wonderful that would be. And the fir tree thought of nothing but this. It took no pleasure in the beauty that surrounded it or the clouds that sailed overhead. And in the winter, when the snow sparkled, a hare would hop along and jump over the tree. And, oh, how irritated the little fir became at that. That happened for two winters straight. But when the third came, the tree was too tall for the hare to jump over, so he just hopped around it. Oh, to grow. It is the most wonderful thing in the world to get older and Taller, the little fir thought. In the fall, woodcutters came and cut down some of the trees. This happened every year. No longer a baby, the fir tree trembled as it watched those great trees chopped down and their branches cut off before they were loaded into carts. By the time the horses pulled the trees away, the little fir could hardly recognize them. Where were they taking them? What would become of them? When spring came and with it the swallows and the doves returned, the fir tree asked, Do you know where the trees went? Have you seen them? The swallows knew nothing, but one of the doves nodded and said, I have seen many big ships coming and going, the tall masts that smelled of fir. Perhaps it was them. They wanted to be remembered by you. Oh, how I wish I could travel to the sea. Please tell me about what it looks like. Oh, that would take far too long, replied the dove as he flew away. The sun heard all of this and told the tree, Rejoice in your youth. Take pride in your strength that grows with each day and appreciate the stir of life within you. And the wind kissed the tree and wept. The fir tree had no understanding of how fragile life can be. When Christmas arrived, many young trees were once again cut down. Some were even smaller than our little fir tree, who was full of fret to go travelling. These young trees, who were the handsomest in the forest, still had their branches on them when they were pulled away by the horses. Where could they be taking them? the tree wondered. They are no bigger than I. One was quite a bit smaller than I, in fact. And why are these allowed to keep their branches? Where can they be off to? We know, the sparrows chirped. We have been to town and peeked in the windows. We know where they are going, where the greatest splendour awaits them. We have seen them planted in the middle of a warm room and decorated with the most glorious things. Shiny toys, candles, golden apples and fresh gingerbread. The fir tree trembled. And, and then what happens? Tell me, please, I beg you. Just that, nothing more. At least that's what we saw. But nothing could match it, this we know. The fir tree rejoiced. I wonder if perhaps I have been destined for such a splendid future. Well, that would be better than to cross the sea as a mast on the ships. Oh, how I wish Christmas would come. I must surely be chosen this year. My branches are full and I am taller than last. Oh, how I wish I were in the cart and on my way to splendour and glory. 
I'm sure something even more will happen, even better. For why would they decorate me with such beautiful things? There must be something still grander. Oh, but what could it be? Ooh, how I wish I knew. You should enjoy the sunlight and the fresh air, little fir. Rejoice in your youth, for it will not last forever, the air and sunlight told the tree. But the fir tree did no rejoicing. It just grew and grew. People who passed by would remark, What a beautiful tree that is! And when Christmas time finally arrived, the fir tree was the first to be cut down. The axe struck the base of the tree and it sighed as it fell to the ground. Instead of joy, the tree felt pain and sadness. It was sorry to leave the home where it had grown up. It knew it would never again see its neighbours, or the little bushes that grow nearby, or the chirping birds. The departure was not what the fir expected, for it was anything but pleasant. The tree did not feel a tinge of hope until they were unloaded, and it heard a man say, That's a beautiful one. That's the tree for us. Then two servants came and carried the tree into an enormous drawing room. Portraits were hung on the walls, and on either side of the marble fireplace stood great Chinese vases with regal lions painted on them. The sofas were covered in silk, and the walls were lined with long tables with picture books and fine porcelain animals on top. The fir tree was planted in a large tub filled with sand. But one would never know it was a tub. It was covered in fine green cloth and set down on a red and gold carpet. How nervous the tree was. A few young ladies gathered round it and the servants returned with boxes full of ornaments. They began to decorate the tree. From its branches, they hung little nets filled with candy, gilded apples, figs and chestnuts. And on each twig, they fastened a hundred tiny candles. At the very top, they placed a gold star. It was absolutely splendid. Tonight, they said, oh, tonight, how the tree will shine. The tree thought, oh, if tonight would only come and they lit the candles. But then what happens? Will the trees from the forest come to see me? Will the sparrows peek into the windows? Shall I take root here and stay winter, spring, summer and fall? And the tree knew nothing more of what would happen, but it could not wait to find out. That night, the candles were lit, and what a dazzling sight to behold. But the tree quivered, for the candle set one of its twigs ablaze, and it hurt terribly. Oh dear, cried one of the girls, and the fire was put out immediately. The tree dared not move at all. It stayed stock still, for it did not want to drop any ornaments. How terrible that would be. Suddenly the doors were thrown open and a flock of children ran into the room so quickly it seemed as if they would topple the tree right there. They were followed by several of their elders. For a brief moment the young ones froze in awe of the beauty of the tree. They sang and danced around the tree and plucked one net of candy off after another. What are these children up to? the tree wondered. And what will happen next? Each candle was then snuffed out and the children were given permission to grab any treat they wanted. They were so excited about it that had the tree not been tied to the ceiling by the gold star on top, it surely would have toppled over. The children danced around the tree with their playthings. A nanny studied the tree, not for its beauty, but to be sure an apple or fig had not been overlooked. The children grabbed one of the men and pulled him toward the tree. Tell us a story, they shouted, and the man sat beneath the tree and said, Here we are, in the woods. It will do the tree much good to listen to our story. Mind you, I'll only tell it one. Which will it be? Ivity Avity or Humpty Dumpty, who fell down the stairs? A few cried, Ivity! 
Humpty Havity! Humpty Dumpty! cried the others, and a great hullabaloo began. The fir tree was the only one who remained calm. It thought to itself, Am I to be left out of this? Is there not something I can do? So far, all the fun of the evening had centred upon it, and it had played its part perfectly. The man chose Humpty Dumpty and told the children the story of Humpty Dumpty, who fell down the stairs but ascended the throne and married the princess. Tell us another, they shouted. But the man had said one story, and it was just one he told. The tree wondered how the birds in the forest had never told him any story equal to the one he had just heard. Imagine Humpty Dumpty tumbled down the stairs, yet he married a princess. This must be how things happen in the world outside of the forest. Perhaps I too shall tumble down the stairs and marry a princess. The tree was excited for the next day when it again would be decorated with candles and gilded apples. It waited patiently through the night for the sun to rise. The next morning, the butler and the maids came in with their dusters. Now my splendour shall be returned to me, the tree thought. But instead, they dragged it upstairs and left it in the corner of a dark room. What is the meaning of this? What shall I do here? What stories will I hear? The tree thought as it leaned against the wall. The days and nights went by, and all the while the tree dreamed of glory. Finally, after days and days, someone came into the room, but only to put boxes away. Well, it is still winter outside. The ground is much too hard for them to plant me. I must have been put here to stay until springtime arrives. How thoughtful they are. I only wish it weren't so very dark and very lonely. <sighs> I dare say I, I even miss the little hare who hopped around me. He was quite friendly. Even when I was little and, and he hopped over me. Though uh, I did not think so at the time. It's so terribly lonely here. Just then came a little squeak, squeak. And a tiny mouse appeared with another following behind him. They sniffed the tree and ran about its branches. It is frightfully cold, said one mouse. Other than that, it is quite lovely, aren't you, old fir tree? I am not old. There are many trees much older than I, replied the fir. Well, where did you come from? What do you do now? They asked. The mice were quite inquisitive little creatures. Well, I'm from the woods, where the sun shines and the air is fresh, and little birds sing from your branches. Oh, how happy that must have made you. Me? Well, I suppose those days were rather amusing, but it was Christmas Eve that was the most thrilling. And the tree went on to tell them all about that night and how it was decorated and stood in the room with splendour and glory. How lucky you have been, old fir tree! I am not old. I am in the prime of my life. I came out of the woods just this winter. The next night, the mice came back with four more in tow. They all wanted to hear what the tree had to say. He told them the story of Humpty Dumpty. He could remember every word from when the man had told it. The next night, even more mice came to hear the tree, and two rats too. They asked, Is that the only story you know? Yes, only that one, the tree admitted. I heard it on the greatest night of my life, though I did not know how happy I was on the occasion. The rats left and never returned, and soon no mice came to visit either. Oof. Wasn't it lovely when those mice came to visit and hear my story? Now that too seems to be past and gone. But I will enjoy myself from now on, once they let me out of here. I, I w wonder when that will be. The tree waited and waited. And finally one day, people came to clean out the room. The tree was dragged down the stairs. Once again there was daylight. Now my life will start over, thought the fir tree. 
they dragged the tree out into the courtyard where the children were playing. One of the youngest children saw something shining and glittering in the dry branches and gently took off a tinsel star that still remained. Oh, how magical this tree was! How glorious! I shall never forget it, the child thought. The tree saw beautiful flowers blooming in the garden and it saw itself and wished that they had left it in the dark room. It thought of its young days deep in the wood and of the merriment it brought on Christmas Eve and of the little mice who had been so excited to hear the story of Humpty Dumpty. And the men dragged the tree around the corner where another man stood beside a pile of chopped firewood with an axe in his hand. And the tree knew that this was the end of its adventure, that it would soon be firewood and have one last chance to blaze brightly. My days are over and past, the tree thought. Oh, why didn't I enjoy them while I could? Now they are all gone. The children played in the courtyard. The youngest child held tightly in his hand the gold star that atop the tree on its happiest night of all. And that's the end of my story. Because, of course, all stories must come to an end. Close our eyes so that we may drift off into a world of our own adventure. Good night, children. <laughs>